back to the coverage of Hurricane Ike. I'm meteorologist Mike Bettis. Southeast right now. I'll give you a lay of the land of what we're doing right now. You can see behind me here, the conditions are just so poor right now and so dangerous to be outside that we are actually broadcasting now from inside our vehicle. Uh, it's dark. There's a lot of debris flying around. The winds are so strong, they will literally knock you right off your feet. Not to mention how bad that rain hurts when it hits your skin. It's like needles hitting your skin. So, I mean, this is an absolute, I have never, and this is my 18th tropical storm and hurricane, and I've never, I've never seen winds like this before. This is absolutely amazing. Some of the larger tree branches, uh, and there are debris within that tree. There's, my goodness, incredible. From him. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take the reins because Mike Bettis obviously is dealing with some uh, a lot worse weather than I guess here in Beaumont, although we are experiencing some wind gusts into the 70s and the 80s. And... It, believe it or not, we still have power in some pockets of town. We're in the downtown area. This is Crockett Street. It's kind of a little district area that the power's been on the entire time, but major portions of Beaumont have lost power. And so uh, I think I'm going to write back to Mike Bettis. Hopefully he's uh, doing a lot better than about uh, 15 seconds ago. Mike, you there? Yeah, we're here, Jorma. Uh, it's kind of what happens with live television. You get these tremendous All right, we're back here at the studio. Obviously, uh, Mike Bettis dealing with that northwestern part of the eye wall and the winds are coming off of Galveston Bay, Nassau Bay, and he is taking the full force of it right now. Yeah, definitely. We're also concerned with areas just south of him on the west coast of Galveston Bay. They're getting pounded by very strong, uh, almost northeasterly uh, winds here, which will pile up the water from Galveston Bay and push it probably even over that seawall there in Texas City. So we can see a huge amount of storm surge. The water has been rising on the west side of the, the bay a couple of feet over the last couple of hours, and the eye is, the center is not even on sure yet. And Mike was mentioning he had one of those handheld anemometers measured a wind gust a short while ago, 100 miles an hour, somewhere around there. Certainly it looks like the conditions are getting worse at this and point. It looks like we're, we have a signal back and Mike, you're hunkered down in the vehicle. Tell us what's going on outside right now. Well, I got to tell you, this is this is a wise choice to make because pieces of the building now, the hotel where we're at, starting to break apart and fall down here. Uh, on the sidewalk so the last place we want to be is out there so we're literally inside our vehicle broadcasting for you and when you look out there I mean that is an amazing sight what we're seeing I was mentioning that I had measured with a handheld anemometer 98 and 101 mile per hour wind gusts the highest I have ever measured before and then my anemometer uh, basically uh, shut down on me so uh, yeah, I can't, I can't stick it out the door here and measure anything for you. But when you look at conditions like this, uh, this is very indicative of what you would see with the Category 2 hurricane. Winds in excess of 100 miles an hour. What that's going to do is it's going to snap large tree branches. It's going to bring down power lines. It's going to bring down a shallow rooted trees. And it's going to knock out power to a lot of people. I would not be surprised, and Centerpoint Energy was making this point yesterday, that we could have the potential of more than a million people in the Houston Galveston area without power. Now consider we've got five and a half million people. That's a good chunk of the population, and I'll be very interested to see what they say uh, tomorrow or even uh, late weekend is how many customers have lost power. It may be significantly higher than one million people when you consider the winds that we're getting now. As far as surge goes, it, when, if you can look beyond the trees here and the vehicles, the parking lot actually slopes down and part of Nassau Bay has now flooded the parking lot. And so there's no chance of actually even getting out of this parking lot because the water is so deep. And there are actually white caps 
in the parking lot. I mean, absolutely amazing what we're seeing, and I can't believe the wind gusts that we've got here. Again, that's why we've actually taken refuge in this vehicle, because there is debris that is flying everywhere, and it's just too dangerous to stand out there. You'll get blown off your feet in a heartbeat, and the last thing you want to do is injure yourself, so we've hunkered down here in this vehicle. Luckily, we're still able to broadcast for you, but obviously, uh, this is a bad situation that uh, we're at the height of right now. What we're looking forward to is the eye coming over us here, over Galveston Bay. If that happens, then winds are really going to calm down for us here. I'm looking out on the road out there. It looks like there might be an emergency vehicle out there, but that's the only vehicle uh, we've seen in hours here out on a NASA Road 1 because across the street is the Johnson Space Center. I can't really give you an update, although as I look over there, I see no lights. So I'm sure that uh, there are some buildings over there that are operating on general, uh, gener generator power because they've got some uh, critical missions. They still have to communicate with the International Space Station. Uh, but uh, that's the latest here from Houston. We're at the height of it right now. Soon we'll be in the eye, and things should calm down for us significantly. So we're looking forward to that for sure. Back to you. Hey, hey Mike, 